Okay. Hi, everyone. First, uh, I would like to thank the International Society of Biomechanics and Sports for these online activities. I hope everyone has been health and safe at home. My name is Bruno. I, I'm a PhD candidate at the University of Sao Paulo in Brazil, supervised by Professor Paulo Santiago. But last year, I was a visiting student at the University of Ottawa in Canada, supervised by Professor Lamontagne and Professor Catelli. So I'm going to present a study that is a partnership between both universities. The title is Effect of the Fatigue on Knee Kinematics and Kinetics during sidestep cutting and single leg landing in female Hannibal athletes. Uh, different, different, in different conference of biomechanics conference or sports conference, you have a lot of studies uh, talking about anterior cruciate ligament ruptures or, or just ACL because it's a, it's a very, very common during different kinds of sports such as soccer, American football, handball, basketball, volleyball. And usually the injuries happen when the athletes are performing a single leg landing or sidestep cutting with the knee joint knee or the foot extension with additional valves and internal rotation. As example here in, of handball players closing in 2010, which is a classic study and the athletes perform a sidestep cutting with uh, additional valves and internal rotation, and it's when happened the, the, the injury. So different studies have investigated these both activities, especially athletes with these characteristics, teenagers, women, women because different, uh, different factors such uh, anatomical, hormonal, and biomechanical, but it's not the case of this study. And I would like to highlight here handball athletes because it's a, it's a sport with a high incidence of injury as well. But the fatigue is a factor that has been related with the cerebral injury, but honestly, all this relationship between fatigue and, and, and the risk of injury is too unclear. First, because in the, la in the last years, we have found an increase in the number of studies investigating this, this, this aspect of the fatigue, but the fatigue protocol may maybe oversimplify the, all this, this complex system that is the fatigue. In addition, fewer the studies that mentally associate fatigue with facial injury and the great fatigue protocol have not constant effect of how the fatigue impacted the variables that may increase the risk of injury. And in a recent, recent study of 2020, Del Avila and, 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 and his team, in soccer players, the injuries happen more in the first half of the game. So the fatigue does not impact looking this this, this data and all these studies. But fewer the studies that have the fatigue and handball players. That's our goal. So to investigate the, the, the impact of the fatigue of a specific fatigue protocol to handball players uh, in the knee kinematics and kinetics in female handball players, handball players during a, a sidestep cutting and a single leg landing. And our hypothesis that was that the knee kinematics and kinetics would be affected by the fatigue shortly after the initial rep contact. Uh, so we have investigated 20, 20 female handball players with more than six years of experience and they were training weekly, um, four or five times weekly, and with this with this age, high and weight. And we have used a full body markers and glycol cameras and one first play to calculate the moments. First, the athletes performed three single leg landings and three side step cuttings. After that, a fatigue protocol. The fatigue protocol it had a sequence of side step cuttings, lateral, lateral, lateral sprints, back sprints, and here, what's very important is that this fatigue protocol was performed inside the lap. So here, a lateral jump, and if you want more information, you can find this study. 
And also, after the fatigue protocol, they performed three side step single leg leanings and three side step cuttings as well. Uh, we investigated just the no dominant limp. All the all the participants had the right lower limb as dominant, so all the all they performed this both tasks with the left leg. Uh, why just one leg? Because because the fatigue we we take so long time to perform with both legs, so we decided just with the no dominant limp. The data first were labeled and filtered using Vicon using Maxus. After that, the the window of analysis was were two seconds after the initial cross contact to single leg landing. So in this case, the first contact with the ground and two seconds after that. And the side step cutting was the base test phase. And to compare pre and post fatigue, you have used the SPM to compare point by point and to know where if you if you have difference where where is the difference. Looking at the results, here have the single leg landing, so the stance phase zero to hundred percent of the cycle, sagittal plan, frontal plan, and transversal plan, and we have found a decrease of the the knee flexion during the fatigue state, fatigue is the red line and baseline is the black line. So a decrease in the, in the knee flexion during the, the fatigue state. And we have also found an increase in the knee valgus during the, the fatigue state as well. But we have not found difference on the knee moments in the knee, kin in the knee joint kinetics and we have not found any difference. And similar results were found to the single leg landing. We have not found any difference in the sagittal plane as well, but we found an increase in the knee valgus during the fatigue state. But similar to the side step can you have not found any difference in the joint moments. Looking to the discussions right now, the difference were found mostly in the weight acceptance period. That is following the initial growth contact, that's the time of the, the, the studies have found a uh, risk of injury. And the decrease in the inflection and increase in the valgus may increase the knee joint load, but we have not found any difference in the kinetic, in the kinetics data. But in decrease in the valgus have been related with the cell injury, so made if, in, in our case, just in this short study, made if fatigue increase, increase the risk injury of a cell injury, but we don't know what happened with the muscle. What, what I mean is that we don't know if the muscle, the muscle force increase or decrease to aim to stabilize the joint. So other studies are necessary to quantify the muscle force, maybe modeling studies, and also to understand what happened with the knee, with the knee joint ligaments and the knee joint contact force, for example. In conclusion, the fatigue impact in the knee kinematics only decrease in knee flexion and increase in the valgus. And for both both tests, side step cutting and single leg leg. But I decided to uh, additional studies to understand what kind of fatigue we are talking about: the central fatigue, a muscle fatigue, uh, and how the fatigue impact directly the knee joint. Because we know that the fatigue impacted the proprioceptive system, but I need some more studies in the in the real game, in the real cards, for example, to understand how how it impacts. Uh, that's our team. Uh, that's myself. I would like to thank you, my Brazilian supervisor, my co-supervisor, Professor Renato, and Professor Paulo Santiago, and the Canadian professors, Professor La Montaigne, my supervisor in Canada, and Professor Catelli. And Tayani uh, was on the graduate student in Brazil. Uh, I would like to thank you all the financial support as well from Brazil and from the University of Ottawa. Uh, please just email me if you have any question. And I also would like to thank you again, the International Society for Biomechanics and Sports for the online conference, for the online activities. And I hope everyone has been helped and safe as well. Thank you so much.